Hey everyone, I am Nathaniel Ruffle Jantz, editor in chief of Zelda Informer. Dot com. <laughs> I suppose you guys all know that. So, uh, this week on Zelda Inquiries, I am joined by Commonwealth Realm. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have a third person on this week. Uh, we had a couple of people that had some last-minute stuff come up in their lives, so, you know, lives happen. But we're here anyways, and uh, we're going to get this this kicked off and going right. Now, uh, from here on out with Zelda Inquiries, we will be releasing... Uh, them in 20 minute segments instead of releasing the full hour to two hour uh, cast in one segment we find it's a lot easier to digest and frankly uh it's just a lot easier for you in general however uh we, i am looking into releasing the full audio recording on its own in a podcast format uh so stay tuned for that i haven't made any final decisions on how we're going to be delivering that uh that being said we're going to get right into questions uh, with only two of us, it should be a pretty quick week, uh, but we'll we'll see what questions you got. Uh, as always, we do not look at your questions before the before we record, so it's all a surprise. Uh, let's start out with here's a fresh question this week from Christopher Trest from our Facebook page. Uh, they ask, "How can the Master Sword be upgraded by regular blacksmiths?" Ooh, I'm assuming they're talking about, like, I don't want to link between worlds, the blacksmith does the upgrades. Um, hmm. Well, it, I guess most swords in general can be cra crafted and upgraded by upgrading the edges uh, or mm -hmm. adding specific... Uh, specific sections but i think it's more about uh, magic infusing them or uh, adding some specific uh, properties to them mm -hmm. uh, compared to what you would usually see so um, well it's difficult to explain i think it's more about the gameplay as uh, a as a part of the gameplay in each mm -hmm. zelda game to upgrade your sword because in real mm -hmm. life you wouldn't be able to upgrade too much uh, apart from maybe just exchanging the blade or if enhancing the edges, that's probably what you'll be able to do with a real sword. Yeah, it's it's interesting. Um, usually, if there's any blacksmith upgrading, such as in a link between worlds, uh, it tends to be the only blacksmith there is. And uh, blacksmiths, you know, they're they're usually ones that craft swords and work on weapons and stuff like that. Uh, so it's natural that they would be the one that could do the upgrading. Um, obviously, in Zelda, there's a lot of mag magical elements involved. I know uh, in Skyward Sword, I, I believe the sword just upgrades automatically when you get the right stuff for it. Um, I don't, I, at least I think so. Or, or did you have to take that to the, to the smith? I couldn't remember. Uh, it was the flames of Din, Nehru, and Furore. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. They just flew into the sword. So, um, so blacksmiths aren't even a common thing necessarily the series uses to upgrade your master sword uh and the master sword sometimes doesn't get upgraded sometimes it's just the master sword and it just is what it is and all you're doing is just collecting pieces of the triforce for yourself um so it, it's it's really interesting uh you know in real life you know blacksmiths uh, if you guys ever have watched the reforge series on on youtube um, you know, they've done things like they've made the Master Sword Blade and they've made like the, the Hylian Shield and all that stuff and a whole bunch of awesome video game weapons. And uh, you see there's a lot that goes into blacksmithing. Um, and, you know, when you have a, a product that's already made, there's, you know, there's still a lot they can do with it because they can deconstruct it and remake certain parts of it. Um, you know, obviously the most common thing that people would take like a sword, say, to a blacksmith for, uh, usually a quick cleanup where, where they resharpen the edges uh, sometimes they reinforce it with new alloy, but that that's really expensive, so people don't do that too often. But th that was popular back with nobles back in the medieval ages. They'd reforge their blades a lot um, and reinforce them. But it, it's it's one of those that uh, it, it's one of those things that it, it's just gameplay related, uh, kind of as Commonwealth Realm said. It it's got really nothing to do with logic. <laughs> um, I mean, we're dealing with a video game. So uh, to think that like a normal blacksmith in the real world would be able to take like magical items and infuse them in, um, that that's <laughs> magical items don't exist in the real world as far as we're aware. So uh, I mean, you might believe in them, that's fine, but I I haven't seen any uh, actual evidence that they exist in the world we live in. Um, 
So basically, it's a video game, and video games do what video games do. <laughs> Sometimes there's no logical explanation for it. Uh, so thanks for, <laughs> thanks for your question, Christopher Trust. Uh, sorry if you, I, I don't know, if there's a different angle you want us to take on it next time, feel free to ask. Um, you know, we're always willing to re-answer questions if there's more clarification. Uh, let me see here. This next question uh, also comes from our Facebook page. This is from Howard Harler. Uh, he asks, how old is Link in Ocarina of Time when he's an adult? And who is older, Link or Zelda? Well, I could take uh, and uh, answer that question uh, because there are two different sure. answers. According to Miyamoto, he is 10 years old. According to the official player's guide uh, published by the Ninten uh, by Nintendo Power, he is 9. So if you take 7 years, he would be either 16 or 17 uh, as adult Link. The, yep. And, uh, you know, for Zelda, we, we don't know exactly... But it's presumed um, that they're around the same age, if not exactly the same. It, it's one of those that there's, there's no official references or hints to how old she is, but they're both kids and they're both adults at the same time. Um, and, you know, their heights are, are pretty close together, uh, which, you know, height isn't necessarily even an indicator of age. Uh, so it, I, I would say that, you know, the, there is no answer on who's older. Um you know, I'm sure definitively there's someone who's older because their birthdays probably aren't the same day. They probably weren't born at the same time. Um, but yeah, I, I I really can't even I can't even speculate on it because they they the game kind of acts like they're around the same age. Um, in my opinion, anyways. Uh, thanks thanks for your question, Howard. Uh, you know that I always like some of these short short shorter and sweeter questions at times. That have more definitive answers outside of the fact that we have no idea who's older. And this one comes from our Facebook page. This is from uh, Austin Connor Connorsick. Again, as always, I apologize if I totally butcher your names. Uh, what would be the best direction for Zelda to head after Zelda U finally comes out? Furthermore, in your opinions, should more experimental Zelda games like Triforce Heroes and Hyrule Warriors be made? All right, so let's break this down. Let's first let's tackle the the first question, the big one with Zelda U. Um, Commonwealth Realm, what, what do you think the best direction for the series is to head after? Well, it depends uh, what Zelda U will be. Uh, according to what we have seen so far, it will most likely be a, a fully open Zelda adventure, something we have never seen to the, this point. Wherever you want to go, when you want to go, you'll be able to go. So that is a completely new approach for, for the series, not seen since uh, the original Legend of Zelda. But uh, what I think Zelda needs to do after uh, Zelda Wii U is just seeing what is the best for a franchise. And uh, we'll see what timeline, uh, if it's fitting for, for the future of Zelda or not, since we don't want Zelda to be constrained by anything. We want it to evolve, we want it to improve, and I think that... Uh, you could try out some new components, such as an online experience, a shared experience in in Zelda, but only uh, in a m limited manner, just like you had in a Link Between Worlds with the Shadow Link uh, uh, battles. But uh, in terms of Zelda, I think that we should be looking at bigger, better open worlds with probably deeper uh, stories. Yeah, it, you know, the big thing is, uh, you know, what is Zelda U going to be? Um, the only thing we know, based on Nintendo's own words, is that it's open world. Um, A.G. Aonomu actually had something interesting to say. I believe it was a week or two ago. He, he, he was doing some Twilight Princess HD interviews. Um, and I think it was the Shaq News. Uh, I, I apologize if it wasn't the Shaq News interview. I know they did one, and uh, one other side did one. Uh, and in there, he mentioned something about how, uh, up to this point, um, Ocarina of Time has sort of been the template for how they built Zelda games. Um, everything just kind of, you know, it, it started with Ocarina of Time and then what could they do uh, in addition to whatever uh, formula Ocarina of Time set up. And uh, Eiji Onomo mentioned specifically that he thinks Zelda U is going to be like Ocarina of Time in that sense. Um, that it's going to be the new template moving forward. Now, obviously, uh, he is the current, um, you know, lead man of the Zelda series, so he can say something like that. Because um, he does control the future of the Zelda series right now until uh, he gets replaced someday, which we have no idea if we're even close to that time yet. We might be, we might not be. 
Um, so, you know, what, what I can say for the, be- the best direction um, is really, <laughs> um, really based so much on uh, not just what Zelda U does, but how successfully Zelda U does it. Uh, if Zelda U comes out and it's a genre defining game like Ocarina of Time was, uh, or The Legend of Zelda on the NES. If it comes out and it, it it just redefines what a Zelda game is. It takes everything that it's been and it does so much different and sets new boundaries and new and new uh, you know new peaks to reach for in development. Um, and uh, that's popular enough that people actually buy the game. Because remember, people have to show up and buy Zelda U. Uh, and the Wii U install base, you know, it probably about thirteen or fourteen million by the time. Uh, Zelda U comes out and you know maybe it's coming to the NX that might increase its sales I don't know but all we know is that Zelda U has to sell well uh, it's one of their highest budgeted games that the team's ever made if not the highest Skyward Sword was the previous high and it, it's it's one of those things where Ocarina of Time I think became the template because of how popular it was and I hate saying that popularity kind of controls the future of a series but it really does um you know, A Link to the Past came out and was did a decently popular experience and it set the new standard for what Zelda was going to be moving forward. Then Ocarina of Time came on, built on top of it, and created the 3D game template of what A Link to the Past was trying to do. Um, so really, A Link to the Past is the template we're still building off of today. Um, but, you know, for 3D games, you know, we got the things like the lock-on targeting, um, you know, the easy-to-see hookshot, you know, spots on walls and all that stuff. That all started with Ocarina of Time. And I think that it really just comes down to how successful Zelda U is. Because if Zelda U is a, a huge, let's say Zelda U moves like 4 million units, okay, overall. And I, I'd have to say that's a, a, a pretty big success if it's a Wii U only game. Uh, because the best selling games, period, on the Wii U sell 4 million. Uh, so if you, it can get to that plateau, then you're talking about the best direction for the series is to build off of what Zelda U establishes. Um, it's all the tanks and it does under 2 million in sales overall. Um, the best direction is probably not to continue what Zelda U did. Uh, it's to go back and beat the dead horse, go after and create another Twilight Princess slash Ocarina of Time type of game. Um, you know, change the visual style back to, you know, the more realistic, as they say, style. Um, and it, it, it's hard because the best direction to me at least, uh, is about combining what the game actually is with what your personal desires for the game to be are. Um, I really, really like linear Zelda games, uh, which is why Skyward Sword is one of my favorite games. And I understand that that's not a popular notion among some fans. They would rather have an open world game. And to be fair, uh, we haven't really had an open world Zelda game in my opinion, like truly open world, since The Legend of Zelda NES. So it's hard for me to be like, man, I really prefer open world Zelda games, but we've only had one. Um, you know, so I would love to say that's what I want the future of the series to be, but I need to see that they can even do open world Zelda games well. Uh, the only major time we've seen Zelda use world, now granted, this is you know a year and a half ago now, um, was at the Game Awards back in you know, the, the very first showing of it back in 2014 when we got to see uh you know Anumo running through the fields on you know what Miyamoto called Epona and there was like nothing going on there was very few enemies very few things looking like you could discover um there was a couple enemies at one point uh it, it was it, it wasn't it wasn't really what I think a, what people expected from the game uh the, the the idea of big empty open fields that that was true in Ocarina of Time that was true in Twilight Princess, if that's true again in an open world Zelda, then it almost defeats the purpose of the open world. You're just traversing empty space to get to the next objective, um, and that's not fun, in my opinion. So uh, I have to see what Zelda U is before I can really tell you what the best direction is going to be, because the best direction is going to be based on how successful or not successful Zelda U is at what it does. And if people, um, even if it is really successful, like say the people that play it think it's like the greatest Zelda game ever, um, are people going to buy it? Um, are they going to be interested in the game enough to even give it that chance? 
Uh, I'd like to say that yes, they will. Uh, but as we've seen with like Triforce Heroes, even Hyrule Warriors Legends to an extent, um, even A Link Between Worlds, A Link Between Worlds had a lot of positive reception, but it didn't really sell a whole lot. Um, and that was on a more popular platform. So it, it'll be interesting to see uh, what Zelda you can do uh, for the future of the series. Because certainly, AJ Noma believes it will be the new trendsetter. Um, so yeah, that that's kind of where I stand. I'm kind of in a, I don't know until we see a heck of a lot more about this game. Um, because, man, we, we really don't know much right now. We're grasping at straws. Yeah, I will mostly agree with you uh, in terms of um, of this evolution which Zelda is going through. Uh, the experience of Zelda Wii U will be crucial in this uh, context. And I think Zelda really needs to uh, step up their uh, overworlds, especially since they have been barren, empty and uh, been really uh, bound compared to the unbound experience which we probably will be getting with uh, with Zelda Wii U. And I hope this is a way to catch up to the other Western RPGs since he was talk- uh, Anuma was talking about a transition from uh, Japanese food to Western style food. And this might be an example of it, going from a more bound, story-driven experience to an open and uh, freedom-based experience for, for us players. So it'll be interesting how Zelda could work this way in the 21st century. And I think that the next Zelda should probably build on this, but of course add some more elements because you will be able to improve on each uh, upcoming installment. So I think that Zelda Wii U should be the trendsetter, just as Anuma is mentioning it. But the successors to Zelda Wii U should build on the legacy of the, of the trendsetter but at the same time not be afraid to be individual installments. So we avoid another Twilight Princess situation where a game is a little bit too similar to the game it's looking up to. It's, as, as I said, I, I agree a lot with what you're saying. It, to me, it still just really matters um, how well Zelda U does it. Because if Zelda U, it feels like it has this grand planned idea for what they want Zelda to be now. And uh, if they don't execute it, then it's going to be irrelevant in my book. It could just be another game they throw out. As we tried, it didn't work out. We're going back to what we know. <laughs> um, and I hope that's not the case, because I think Zelda, Zelda could definitely use a, a fresh perspective on what it does. Um, so I hope everything you say is, is spot on, that they, they nail this and they build off it moving forward. Um, and not build off it necessarily by making the same experience again. Um, although I will say I am totally fine if they do like a quick turnaround direct sequel to it. I'm, I'm cool with that. Um, but you know, that's just me hoping I don't have to wait five years for the next game. 